We're the hand, we're the hand, come and carry us. We're the hand, we're the hand, we're the hand, come you one of our one. We have your hand, we have your hand, we have your hand if you are warriors fun. <laughs> it's cricket time on the Sports Bank Zone. We've gotten to the decisive stage of the biggest party in sport. The Republic Bank Caribbean Premier League. Jamaica Talawas will continue the defense of their title after squeezing into the playoffs with wins over the St. Kitts and Nevis Patriots on Saturday and St. Lucia Kings on Sunday. In Sunday's match, Englishman Alex Hales smashed 119 from 57 deliveries to propel the Talawas to 201 for five of their 20 overs. Iman Wazim chipped in with 41. Roston Chase took two for 33 for the Kings. Chris Green then did major damage with the ball, taking four for 15 to dismiss the Kings for just a 79. Sri Lankan Rajapaksa top scored with 22 as the Talawas went on to win by 122 runs. The Royals fit was also determined, losing to Ghana Amazon Warriors, who surged to the top of the table. Now, the CPL playoffs begin on Tuesday with the eliminator between the Talawas and the Kings. That match will be live on Sportsmax and the Sportsmax app, beginning at 6 p.m. in Jamaica, 7 for the rest of the Caribbean. Let's make a link in Guyana with commentator Nikhil Utem Chandani, a Sportsmax analyst as well. Nikhil, how are you doing? All well, Ricardo. It was great until I heard the same, but uh, I must say I love the studio. Um, congrats to you guys, and it looks brilliant. You know, that's just that's just a serious level of bad mind, but it's all right. Um, what a way for the CPL preliminary stage to end, Nikhil. And let's deal with the, the Jamaica Talawas finishing in fourth for a second successive season. They had to do it the hard way with two big wins on the last two days of preliminary round action. Yeah, I don't know what uh, Chris Prasad and Jeff Miller, who you had on your show a week ago, I enjoyed that interview thoroughly. I don't know what they're putting in the food for the Talawas, for, but for two years now, it just seems like they come to the party, the biggest party in sport, at the very last second. This is exactly the way things aligned for them last season. It was barely getting in by a point then. This season is net run rate. And then who did they play in the Eliminator? The St. Lucia Kings, who they'll meet tomorrow night. So for some weird reason, it just seems like it's a carbon copy repeat. Um, look, they've got a few match winners in there who they've retained in their core um, both overseas and local. Obviously, they lost their captain, Robin Powell, and they also lost five games straight. But the way that they've been able to rebound, especially without Brandon King, Alex Hills and his addition has been huge for them. And we saw his experience yesterday. Even after pretty much a rut of, of low scores, he was still able to shake that off and come with a massive century when they needed it the most. But also, I just think the way that they play their game yesterday in that aggressive manner, um, if they do that again in the playoffs, I, I think they're a very hard team to stop. Yeah, let's deal with Alex Hales for a second. 59 runs in four innings before his 119 on Sunday. Uh, in my opinion, he had given a little warning on Saturday with that 17 from 16. He got out at a point when it looked as if he was just ready to let loose, um, but he delivered in a massive way on Sunday. How good was that 119? It was dominant. Um, I, was, I was shocked, to be honest, because... If you even watched him in the, in the tournament before, in the 100, um, before the blast, it was struggling. 19 innings without a half century, which was almost unheard of for a player of his stature and, and all the accuracy he has in T20 cricket. And even at the CPL in 2019, didn't really have the best of seasons, even though the Tridents won then. This year, again, he was getting starts, but wasn't kicking on. But it's almost like he realized the responsibility that was on his shoulders without Brandon King, who they've relied upon so much. And even after stuff tricky first couple of overs in that power play he just ensured that he spent some time there but also the manner in which he was able to flick the switch where they scored at close to 15 runs were 15 runs per over in that last five overs for me it was just unreal and i don't think many players in the world have that ability to just flick the switch like that yeah um 
Brandon King, the regular captain, um, we understand a groin injury. He is also likely to be out for tomorrow's eliminator against the St. Lucia Kings. So that is a big blow for the Talawas. But Imad Wazim, you would have to say, led the team really well in Sunday's match. And in fact, whenever he's had an opportunity to lead this team, Wazim, he's done a really good job. In fact, at the end of the match, one of the things he said is that we're looking like a dangerous team, the Talawas, in a similar situation to what we were in a year ago. Given the momentum and everything, do you believe that the Talawas have the makeup, the quality to reproduce what they did a year ago? Yeah, in terms of the quality, they definitely have it. And the reason I think they stand out amongst other teams, Ricardo, is the individuals that they have. Obviously, at the end of the day, it's going to come down to which team can get the most out of a team collectively. But last season, it was exactly this. Mohamed Amir in the power play, Imad Ozim in the middle, uh, Brandon King obviously stepping in with the runs, and then they got something out of Brooks, Captain Powell, and Reefer. This season, Amir has been special at the back end of the innings. I think he's taken nine wickets uh, in the last five. Wazim has been their best ball in the power play. King has shipped in with runs. And, and this is a time where now Brooks has shown that he can step in. He got that 100 in Guyana last season, a 47 from just 30 balls against the Kings in the Eliminator. And we've seen Rifa uh, with a strike rate. For me, I'm watching Fabian Allen. He continues to be explosive. He contributes in all three facets of the game. And he loves bowling at the Providence. I don't think they've gotten the most out of him as yet. I possibly think they can even use him a bit earlier. But what Alex Hill said to me, or said to the uh, viewers after the, the win, was that he wants them to come out and play the same way they did it on that day. Aggressive. And they have the personnel and also have the depth to do it, especially with bat in hand. If they do that and they get to 200 plus batting first and eliminator, I think it's very hard to beat them. Yeah, another team that has been really impressive this season, the Ghana Amazon Warriors. They've always been impressive where the CPL is concerned, Nikhil. Just unable to close it out. Let's talk about Shea Hope and that century for his team. Uh, to be honest, Mariah, it was, I think, for West Indian fans and also cricket lovers around the world, it was a dream not to watch. Just the way the tempo in which he began. Usually, in the last couple of games, he's gotten the runs, but... As commentators, we have discussed his tempo. He's been mainly run a ball for his first 25 deliveries. And to be honest, we've seen that he can be better than that. In that first 50 against the Patriots, he struck at over 150. And we've known Shea Hope to have enough quality to be able to strike at that 150 plus and still churn out the runs. What he did yesterday was a Shea Hope of a different caliber. And if he does that, I think he's right up there with the best in the world. You look at Joss Butler, Suryo Kumar Yadav in T20 cricket, Henrik Klassen. Those are the innings that they're able to produce, but just at a much more consistent level. It was ridiculous the way he struck the ball. Now we have to ask, is it because the pressure was off? Remember, the Warriors had nothing to lose. Can he re replicate the innings of that quality in a playoff game where they must win? Regardless, though, he has found something else in his game this season, and it's great to see from a West Indian perspective because I think he's very important given the ability against spin especially. Yeah, well, only time will tell us, Nikhil, when he's put in a pressure situation. But for now, we'll celebrate that century. Talk to me about the bowlers, Imran Tahir, Gurikesh Moti, ensuring that the Barbados Royals did not have an opportunity to seal that fourth spot. Yeah, they've had a really good bowling attack. And obviously, Tahir and Moti will lead it uh, going forward, given the games are at Providence. What Tahir has done, not only as a bowler, but as a leader, for me, really stood out. I don't think many people... Uh, gave him a chance uh, in terms of being a captain because he's never really led in T20 cricket before. And I'll put my hand up and say even I. But I was badly wrong because when you look at the way he has led this team, just body language, overall the way he's carried himself and spoken after games, before games, he has all the makings and he's shown his maturity at 44 years old. What I want to see is, first of all, how do they fill the chemo Paul boy? Because that fifth bowling option has been somewhat of an issue for them throughout the season. Pretorius has been good up front with the new ball. Shepard continues to take wickets at the back end. But is it Odin Smith? Is it Junior Sinclair? Who did they back as that fifth option? Maybe even Shamar Joseph, who's just come in uh, in that last game. Because I think that could be a crucial deciding factor when they come up against TKR, who we know have all this power and explosiveness.
Right, and Nikhil, you know, when we look at the matchups coming up, they're very mouth-watering because you spoke about the history between the St. Lucia Kings and the Jamaica Talawas. We also know the rivalry and the history between the Ghana Amazon Warriors and Trinbago Knight Riders. I think we're poised for two exciting matchups. I'm going to put you on the spot. Uh, maybe call both. Well, curry chicken versus chicken curry. I'll start there. I would... I, this is a bold prediction. I don't like to predict usually because it's hard in T20 cricket in one-off games. But I just have a small feeling that TKR will take that game and the Warriors still will meet them in the final. I just think the power and also Puran, we have to see if Dwayne Bravo comes back because I think on these conditions, he's a handful. In the other game, wow, Talos Kings, two teams I really enjoy watching. I think I'm going to have to give the edge to the Talos, man. I just think they are a hard team to beat given the match winners and... Yeah, uh, well, you put me on the spot there, Mariah, but I think those are my two picks. Could change before the first game, but if I had to pick now, I'm going with those two. Okay. Yeah, on the fence. On the fence, Nicola Tamchandani, on the <laughs> fence. I don't want anyone to accuse you of being a Monday morning quarterback, um, Nicola Tamchandani. <laughs> so I will give you the opportunity to go even further and tell me who is going to win the CPL this season. Wow, Ricardo, I'm going with the Warriors. This is their year. I'm in Guyana. I've seen <laughs> the thousands of people that continue to support this team. This is the year of the Warriors. They keep putting up these signs, this is we year. I think this is their year for sure. I think so. They're, they're just strong. It's almost like saying it's coming home, um, <laughs> Lance and Mariah. Um, interestingly, so Nicola Tamchandani is saying that he is picking TKR to beat the Warriors um, in the qualifier but then he expects the Warriors to get to the final and then beat TKR there. Um, wow, he has it all worked out. Big up to you, Nikhil Otamchandani. Lance, you're sticking with TKR, right? And, and Mariah Ramarak? Yeah, I've always stayed. The oh. only reason I went to Ghana was for the women because one Ram Harak was playing there, but it's TKR for me. Mm, all right, so TKR, TKR, um, TKR on, no, Warriors on Zoom. Wait, can, can I? Can, You're can the Talawas, right? Can I say Talawas? Where are the Talawas? Where are no, the Talawas? No, I want the Talawas to win. I want the Talawas to win, but I long predicted the, the Trinbega Knight Riders to win the CPL, so that's not news. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, the news is we got to go to break, though. Yeah. Nikhil, chat to you soon. Cheers, guys. Thanks for having me. Enjoy yeah. the new studio. Thank you. This is how we play the game.